Hi everyone, welcome to the show. It's Local Chat episode 191. That's right, folks. Forwards and backwards, you can't mess it up. You can't even be dyslexic about it. 911's here, 191. Joining me this week uh, for the first time in a long time, Jake Terrio. Are we actually live? I don't see the on-air light. I'm I'm yeah, live. live. Okay, I just, just must not be able to see it. <laughs> it's an elaborate ruse for you, Jake. I didn't want to freak anybody <laughs> out. Yeah, two of us are live. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine? That'd be incredible. Um, Ian Gibson's also here, bra- braving the weather. I heard, fun fact, I heard you were built on dirt stilts. Is that correct? That's right. So you see, when neighbors are built, I'm oh, just kidding. This is, uh, yeah, long story short, Hurricane, okay. Do hurricane you guys know the okay. name of this hurricane? Do Helen? you guys know the Helene? name? I, I've only heard somebody say it once, and they said Helene? It's Helen with an E on the end of it, and I Helene. don't like it that name. It is Helene. Yeah. That's bad. It's bad. Um, but anyways, yeah, it's coming through, and I was talking to Will this morning, and I was like, yo, the wind is supposed to be bad between 6 p.m. and 2 a.m., and we record at 9 p.m., so we were trying to figure it out. So if I drop in the middle of this, I have died. It was the But storm. honestly, Yeah. Honestly, it's not supposed to be that bad here. We're, we're going to get like less than an inch of rain and it's just going to be wind gust. But my power is a little weak. It likes to fluctuate a lot. So we probably will lose power a couple times throughout the night. Who knows? But I'm here. I'm alive for now. That, I mean, that's unfortunate, but hopefully you will die at some point during the night and yep. you can truly be happy. Cool. Well, I'll see you all later. Thanks for joining yep. us. What's um okay, someone's put business discussion here. What does this mean? Is this you Ian? Yeah, this was me. Look, I know we try and keep our business behind the scenes, but I'm glad that we've got the three of us here because I do have to lodge a complaint formally about Kyle's behavior. Um <laughs> I I don't know. It, this is a serious fucking complaint, okay? I don't know why he did this. I don't know when he did this. But somehow Kyle gave my cat diabetes. <laughs> <laughs> I look, long story short, is Grayson, who's my big pussy, he normally weighs 20 pounds, has recently become Are a skinny pussy. Are we allowed to say that on, on stream? Uh, yeah, I'm talking about my cat. Um... He went from 20 pounds down to like 13 ish pounds over the last five, six weeks. And even though he's still been eating a lot and I was like, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on. So finally I take him to the vet and the vet runs a blood test and they come in. They're just like, it's diabetes. And I then have to spend the next 10 minutes in which they are describing diabetes and how this works for a cat and how I'm supposed to give him insulin and all this stuff. I have to spend that entire 10 minute serious conversation holding back laughter <laughs> because as soon as i heard that my cat had diabetes I, I i already know it's treatable so it's good news but also i immediately wanted to burst into laughter it's like thank you god for giving me the perfect punchline, which is that now my cat has kyle's disease um so yeah he's got diabetes i've got insulin in the fridge now i gotta give him shots twice a day i have they gave me one of those little needle disposal plastic things because you can't use the easy pens that humans use you have to use an actual syringe with it so yeah uh i i there's a lot of things we're known for but diabetes is definitely one of them subpixel content only find it here it's surprising god would give animals human diseases yeah Well, so uh, while I was stifling back laughter, um, the vet, she explained that we're going to go through a bit of a roller coaster because we need to figure out uh, Grayson's dosing, which is much harder for cats than it is for humans. And one of the things she said was, we do have the option if we can't figure it out, we have the option of of putting one of those human diabetes monitors on him (laughs) like you literally shave a spot they said they attach it with surgical glue it stays on there for two to three weeks and it will just constantly tell you (laughs) his his glucose level and And i was like every two to three weeks i imagine well the way she was saying was like you can just do it for that period and that will help us dial in the dosing i got it yeah because basically that's the problem is is i'm giving this to the cat they should yeah i feel like kyle's got it easy right Right. because because the Kyle has that think about computer it. thing, right? Yeah, but I was does, saying yeah, just does. do it once and figure <laughs> oh, out the right oh, dosage. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. 
<laughs> just solve that, it. That's Why what can't they were they just talking solve about. Kyle's diabetes. <laughs> <laughs> that's what they were talking about though was they were like it's hard to tell so basically i do it for two weeks and then i bring the cat in and they run the test for like 50 bucks to tell me if it's okay or not and then we just keep adjusting it from there and then they were like you got to have a bottle of corn syrup so that if his blood sugar crashes and he's really lethargic and not coordinated you got to like rub corn syrup on his gums to get his sugar back up and i'm like jesus <laughs> um so yeah uh, I, I will say this is half a joke, but half serious. I don't know what Kyle's complaining about for the cost of insulin, because because <laughs> mine was ten dollars for a vial, and I'm assuming it's different. But at the same time, it's insulin. So Kyle, maybe you should be talking to your vet about getting insulin. <laughs> Uh, it has to be different, right? Know. It has to be. I, it could be the same because when they did the when they said the monitor, they're like, it's it's the same as a human. We're we're just going to give them the human monitor for glucose. So I think it's one of those things where there may not be a difference. So I Kyle needs to move to Florida is basically what you're saying, and then get yeah, cat insulin. Yeah, it was literally ten bucks for the vial. Damn, damn. Well, we'll make sure that 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 news reaches him. Uh, in other news, I successfully did electronics this week. I installed a mod chip on my PlayStation 1. Um, I uh, was extremely scared the entire time. I have very shaky hands. Uh, mm -hmm. And um, so that was fun. I have this nice little uh, soldering iron that is like a tiny little electronic thing. And you dial That's the temperature nice. on it the only problem is the cable attached to it is like heavy so you put it down on the stand and just like a bump wants to flip it off and like go somewhere oh, so yeah. i need to buy like a proper stand for it um i was hoping to upgrade to that new i fix it one but it's like 300 dollars, and i don't solder enough to pay 300 dollars for a new soldering iron uh so i'm not going to do that i think i'm just gonna Wait, buy a, is, a better is the i fix it one really 300 dollars? it's uh, with the power supply and, and everything is 300 dollars. but fucking wireless soldering irons are like 50 bucks everywhere yeah now. I, I i think it's because they're like they're planning a whole line with their power brick for it it's like a power brick you can like use for like bigger stuff and like attach yeah. with it i think you can buy the I, thing I, separately I, I... It's just like still their like, new system. It's just weird because like like Ryobi has a soldering iron like that that runs off Ryobi batteries. And it's like, yeah, sure, the battery's expensive, but you get that shit on sale all the time. And the soldering iron itself is like 40, 50 bucks. Like I, I fix it makes great stuff. I have their like screwdriver kit. I did not purchase that because it was like $80, which is insanely expensive. It was mm. nice to get as a gift, but it's just a shame. I feel like I fix it. Everything about I fix it is great, right? Their guides their tools, the parts they provide, except for the fucking prices on their tools. That's the insane part. Yeah, it's um, actually, forgive me, it's $250. But it's also like, I, I, if I remember the video I watched correctly, the soldering iron itself is only 80 bucks. But the other thing is like, it's also a like portable charger and you can use it for other stuff like it's oh it's yeah got some so other you're bells and whistles in it that are, i think are worth it from what i read i just don't remember what they are at the top of my head it could also still they, just be expensive yeah they, they see if they were smart they would do the the ryobi thing and the walt does this etc which is if you try and buy a battery by itself it's like a hundred bucks right but you never buy a battery by itself they always have bundles where they're like hey buy this tool for a hundred bucks and you get a free battery or two free batteries with it. And you think, oh, that's a fantastic deal. And it is a great deal until you realize, oh, because I have these batteries now, whenever I need a power tool, I should really just buy Ryobi. And they basically converted you into like a dedicated customer to just their brand by giving you the batteries for cheap. And yeah. it feels like I fix it is is going the complete opposite, which is like, oh, you want the cool stuff? Cool. Uh, fuck you. We're going to gouge you on the battery, which is that's that's the wrong way to go. Uh, and I'm also, I'm talking at my ass here, but it was something my father-in-law told me, and I don't remember it because I wasn't really paying attention, but I don't know if it's a New Jersey thing or a U.S. thing, or he was talking about some faraway land, but that the, when you buy batteries now, you have to get the adapter, like it comes with an adapter because it doesn't matter what company battery you buy now, it'll work on any other company's thing, and I don't. Oh, I don't know yes, if that's like yes. a New Jersey law or like a U.S. No, no. law. 
No, no, it's not. It's just, I think what he's talking about is like, I have Ryobi batteries. I can go to Amazon and buy a $10 adapter that lets me use that Ryobi adapter right. in so Milwaukee that, tools and stuff. But, but the companies yeah. now have to supply you with it for the specific brand. Like they're legally oh. have to do it. And, and I, I don't know where that law is applying. You don't know about it. So yeah. it makes me think it's a New Jersey thing, but it's like they all, all the companies in New Jersey or wherever this happened decided like Makita is the battery and all other batteries need to have an adapter that plugs in to all that other format. batteries. So uh, I thought that was gotcha. neat. And I'm like, that's a cool thing. Uh, but anyways, back to uh, mod chip. So I, took the entire the problem with this mod chip is there's like zero documentation and there's also about 50 types of playstation ones uh so i had the pu 23 motherboard i finally found a pinout uh for it printed everything out sat down soldered everything got the chip on soldered all the points onto the chip put it all back together put the disc in and the lens on the uh cd or disk drive kept crashing up into the cd it was like making this Oof. horrific noise and i had booted it up before and i was like this isn't normal so i opened it back yeah. up and i noticed i had bridged the two sides of a tiny little resistor um oh, so yeah. i went to unbridge it and just completely removed the the resistor and i went fuck <laughs> and so i like slowly carefully i i in my panicking forgot i had the like um wicking stuff for solder yeah so i was like trying to take the solder off manually and like brushing it off and all this so i finally get that thing back down finally attach the wire back to it and i'm like this thing's fucked there's no way this is gonna work put it all back together boot it up loads into the japanese denture to go easy peasy so i can nice. now play games from all over the world on my playstation one um i don't really recommend doing this i only did it because that chip was five dollars uh and i wanted to practice some soldering i then after doing all that i just bought a um eight dollar kit for like this little car that drives on a track uh, uh -huh. to practice more soldering um because it was fun i had a good time and i need to get better at that and the only way to get better is to solder a bunch of shit so uh, same yeah I'm right, I'm right there with you. I'm really bad at soldering. I, I need some projects to, to practice on. Yeah, this little car was like eight bucks. It, it has like a, it follows black lines. So I think the sensor like senses the dark. It's like it came with a piece of white oh, yeah. paper with black lines on it. So it like follows that and drives around. So, um, but it's literally just like, hey, solder all this shit to it. And I'm like, that is fine yeah. with me. Um, so I, I think my next project fun. I think I've mentioned this to you before, which is I found this really cool online tool which lets you design a mechanical keyboard PCB through like like a generic like JSON type language where you're literally just like three rows, this many keys, space this between them. And basically it outputs a PCB design file that you can then go to PCB way and have them print for like five bucks for you. And then you just have to solder all the components on and the chip on so it's it's actually like a super easy way to design your own custom keyboard but once you have the design it's just like drop in the stuff and solder all the stuff so i think that may be my next my next soldering electronics project see that that sounds good i, I want to do something like that it's it's that type of thing i wish like apprenticeships were still a thing in the sense of yeah. like i could go to a business and be like hey can i like shadow someone who does x y and z for a day like i want to learn how to do this i want to see if i'd be good at it that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm happy you get to be doing that because uh, it's fun. Um, and we already talked about the hurricane. So that's all the chit chat business that we have. Uh, video games, folks. Video games are here. They're, they're everywhere. They've infested our pores. I had to call the doctor doctor this week. Uh, that is the Dead Rising Deluxe Remaster. I have finished it. It is over with. I beat the... 72 hour mode then the overtime mode i'm not quite to the 53,500 zombies uh it does thankfully carry across runs now to get that final uh -huh. achievement so i'm at like 15 20 000, i think zombies um i'll just occasionally pop in and probably slowly boost that up but uh i really enjoyed the remaster uh, dead rising is a game i played the demo of like a ton when it was out on a 360 the demo was one of the ones where it was just the entire game but you just had a time limit 
and the time limit just reset every time you booted up the demo. So I played a shit ton nice. of that game. Uh, the remaster is very faithful to the original game, changed a few things, like you can move when you're aiming now. Uh, you can, I believe, uh, you can take multiple people with you, like survivors with you at the same time, uh, and a bunch of other, like, probably things I'm not even noticing that were, were fixed up from the original game. My, my one issue with it, it is a lot easier than the original game. Uh, and, and I don't know if that's strictly because of some of those changes, but I remember that original game dying constantly, barely making it to the 72 hours. And this one, I just, I think I died twice and I breezed through the whole thing. Um, uh -huh. there's a courtyard with prisoners in it who drive around a Jeep with a machine gun that the, their music will haunt me for the rest of my life. And they were pretty easy in this version <laughs> of the game. Uh, I, yeah, I think there, I, I also don't know if this is a glitch, but when you hold hands, you can hold hands with the female, uh, it, it, actually that's not true. I, I it is true, you but to... you, can, you can hold hands with the female survivors. But I think it's only they like the survivors have different dispositions now. Like they're scared or they're like, so when you hold their hands, it means uh -huh. they're gonna follow you closely. Where if you didn't hold their hands, you'd have to constantly like call for them. Uh, and then there's like old people or someone who broke their leg, and you can carry them on your back. But when you're doing that, the zombies can't grab you. And I'm like, that has to be a glitch or a bug or something, what? because I'm just running through hordes of zombies and not getting attacked, not even getting grabbed. And all of the people following me aren't getting grabbed either. So I'm like, what is happening here? And and one time I got grabbed out of it and I was like, OK, so maybe there is a but I've tested it further and there seems to be zero limit to it. Um, it's wild. It's weird and wild, but overall, I think this is a fantastic remaster. I think this is kind of my go-to, like, what is a video game remaster, like, in my uh -huh. mind, and it's like, oh, we just re we just up the whole game, changed a couple settings, blah, 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 blah. It's still, we didn't change any of the story, change any of the, of the way it yeah, functions and, and that sort of stuff, so. Uh, it's also only $40, or no, it's only $50. It's sixty dollars if you want all the costumes, which I didn't, um, and I think that's a pretty competitive price for a game from two thousand seven, two thousand eight, no, two thousand six, I think. Um, a game worth remastering. Uh, so go check it out. That's Dead Rising Deluxe Remaster uh, out on video game consoles wherever you get those. Uh, another game I played this week: Frostpunk Two, the uh, hit sequel to Frostpunk One. Uh, this game, I think, is great. I have about three to four hours into it. Now, either of you play the original Frostpunk video game? No, it uh, seemed too depressing. No. Wow. Okay. Well, I'm I'm very bad at real time strategy, even in just like the management sim sense. Okay. Outside of like Roller Coaster Tycoon. Um. Okay. Well, uh, I mean, the children yearn for the mines, so let them mine. <laughs> Um, so in the original uh, Frostpunk, you had a giant generator at the center of your city, and then you were building out buildings and uh, roadways, like a circle out of that. And in okay. Frostpunk 2, at least in the campaign mode, I am, uh, they're like, hey, the captain has died in New London, the guy who's leading us, which I think is who you were in the first game. And they're like, we need to expand. We need a steward. Uh, we need to set up council chambers and every, all this sort of stuff. So now you that entire city that you were building in the first game is in the center. And now instead of building more buildings, you're building districts. For, you're like one layer of ice oh. up. So it's not the same game because you're not working on the little city. You're now expanding big di industrial districts, extraction districts, housing districts. And it's still like your 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 um, main source of uncovering these tiles is ice breaking. Uh, so they send out these giant like digger machines with the spinning grinders and you pick a path for it to cut out ice and you need to like do a certain number of I think it's eight, eight tiles uh, you're forced to do. So it's kind of like a creative puzzle where you're like, oh, if I do this tile over here, I can get this one. But if I go just eight in a straight line, I can get right to this unlimited food really quickly, but it'll make like an ugly district when I, when I put it together. So you're ice breaking, 
uh, you're uncovering resource nodes, and then depending on what the resource node is, you're like, okay, extraction goes here, and then next to the extraction, I'll build an industrial who can convert this into something else. This food district I can do. Uh, and then housing districts, you're trying to find places where uh, stuff is like blocked from the wind. So you're like digging outward and then putting housing districts like in crevasses and stuff to, to protect things. And then on top of that, you are sending scout parties out to the frozen wastes to try to find other stuff, um, other survivors, more coal. I just found oil um, and I'm actually setting up a colony now at the oil district. And I haven't gotten into that yet, but I'm wondering if that colony I will be more like Frostpunk 1 and I'm like sort of building a city uh, or it might just be more district stuff. I, I don't actually know. But either way, um, it's kind of a clever... I was expecting this to be more of the same and it's a clever way they've gotten around of being like, hey, we're not going to make you do the, all the same stuff in the first game. We're going to make this a little bit more fun. Uh, you have cool. multiple groups of people in your city. So like my city right now is like 45% uh new londoners uh i think it's 40 or 30 something percent frosters i think they're called who people lived in the waste and then you have like faith keepers who are like wanna turn sort of like the generator something you worship and then there's the evolvers who want to like they want to they don't want to change the world for them they want to be as survival as possible and be like okay we're going to survive in these harsh conditions not change the harsh conditions back to what we want um, and you're passing laws in the council and you are promising certain factions that you will pass laws for their help on previous laws. So like, I'll go to vote for something. Oh, that's and it's, cool. It says 26 yay, uh, 15 nay, 70 undecided. And so you could go for it and win, but you can also be like, oh, let me negotiate. And you hit negotiate, show us all the factions. You click on the faction you want and be like, hey, if you do this, I'll pass a law that lets children work till midnight. And everyone's <laughs> like, yay! And so you pass it. And, and it does this cool thing where it's like a top down of the council chambers and all the people light up while they're voting. Uh, and it, like, it shows if you pass or not. It's really fun. It's steeped in atmosphere. You get these little story pop-ups that happen all throughout. Some are, are actual things that you have to respond to. Some of them are like, hey, this guy wrote a po poem and you're just reading the poem now. Uh, and it's it's really fun. I think it's the next stage up from what they did in the previous game. It's just as dark and dour uh, as the previous one, even more so. Uh, there are still like buildings and stuff like that. So you can build hospitals and everything, but it's more like district based. You know, like, let me throw a hospital here. Let me throw a research here. Um, mm -hmm. It's good. It's really good. I I'm really enjoying it. That's Frostpunk 2. It is on Game Pass PC. I don't know if it's on Xbox Game Pass. Uh, I kind of assume it would be, but... Uh, I was just looking today. I think it might be coming soon. Okay, I could be wrong. yeah. I don't know if it's on... Yeah, I don't know if it's on Xbox, but it it's really fun. Uh, it looks really good as well. Uh, and, and I love ice and frozen survival, so I'm... Very excited. And border control. That's why I love ice. Um, moving on here, uh, I was also playing a bunch of Derail Valley. This is a train simulator video game in which you are running your own little train company by yourself. You are driving a train around the map, uh, picking up cargo, dropping off cargo. It's basically truck simulator, but trains. Uh, and it's not they're not like super complicated trains or like super like you're the only train it's like a made-up map uh, but it's really really fun I have also been playing this in VR uh, on the uh, Rift S and that is really? also extremely fun I had a bunch of headaches getting that set up yesterday I thought it broke but it woke up again today but uh, it feels really good in VR. Uh, I had to get used to walking around, but there is a teleporting. Um, I drove a steam engine in VR today. I drove the electric train in uh, VR yesterday. Um, I, there's some things I have to get used to VR. I think I prefer learning how the train works outside of VR and then coming back into VR and like driving and messing around. But when I actually want to like play the game, I, I think I prefer playing it outside of vr um it just it feels a little bit better and they've worked on mm -hmm. a lot of those those systems that uh work fine in um in 
keyboard mouse so it, it's really fun i highly recommend the game if you're into trains at all it is literally just like hooking up trains going to the rail yard switching over to the right side like grabbing the cargo making it over to the next place you're then like unlocking licenses as you earn more money i just unlocked the long haul license i unlocked a steam train that train was really hard to drive but i managed to do it i thought the boiler was going to explode I had to actually get out of VR because it was a little too intense. Um, <laughs> but uh, it, it's just fun. And it, it's more, I was expecting it to be just straight simulator and it has all this other stuff in it. It's, it's fun. Apparently I can get military trains at some point. So uh, so that's cool. You can also derail and, and all that sort of stuff. What was that? Big Bertha. Big Bertha. Yes. Big Bertha would be, oh man. Oh man. <laughs> Um, but this also led me to, and should I get the new MetaQuest 3S? Should I buy that? Um, you, you know, honestly, what I just saw was that the MetaQuest 3 128 gigabyte version is being discontinued, and you can get that for like 400, 430 right now, I believe. Uh, but um, the 3S is 300. So l let me skip ahead real quick. Uh, Meta did announce the Quest 3S, which is essentially a, a slightly budget version of the Quest 3. But there's there are some key differences here between the Quest 3 and the Quest 3S. Uh, number one, field of view goes from 110 down to 96. Uh, the lens separation, which lets you kind of do the interpupillary distance, which helps people have different distances between their eyes. It, it goes down to a three step. So it may be hard to dial in, whereas the Quest 3 is like continuous, like you can micro find that uh, it goes from a dual LCD down to a single LCD. The pixels go from 2000 by 2200 down to six, 1700 by 1800. So you lose five pixels per PPD angular resolution. So it's not going to be as nice a screen. That being said, the chips the same, the RAM's the same, um, the body weight and size is pretty much the same it just doesn't have a headphone jack so it's one of those things where you're, you're right you can get the 128 3s for 300 dollars, but if you pay like 100 130 bucks more you could get the 128 quest 3 and and honestly I, I would look i would for you i would look at what is the size the screen size resolution difference between the quest 3s and the rift s because mm that will tell you if you're okay with the rift s screen and the quest 3s is pretty much the same then the only thing you're really getting with the 3s is the wireless which is nice but it's really just a convenience thing where you don't have to plug into the computer you can do it wirelessly at, at which point i would say if it's the same resolution i would recommend the, going from the rift s to the three because the, the bump in resolution is really nice um so yeah i i in terms of VR games that you can enjoy in VR, I do think now is the time where you can justify the cost of a VR headset, especially since the tech is here, it works, it's wireless, it's super convenient. But that is an interesting question you raise, which is if you have a Rift S, do you need to upgrade? And I would say not to the not to the 3S. I don't think there's enough of a bump in the hardware for you to make that difference. Okay. That's that's I'll 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 look into it. I'll see if there's got to be some YouTuber who put a video together yeah. that can let me know. But um I um yeah I was really enjoying the VR to, uh in that Derail Valley and I was like uh like what if I upgraded so maybe I'll try out it's, the I also need to try out the Quest Three at Extra Life. Yeah 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 you'll you'll just notice that it's so there's two big things. Number one is the resolution is much nicer. Um, which is great. But the crazy thing is I don't I don't play standalone things on the Quest 3. Like like the games there are OK, but I really just use it for PC. But it's it's a testament to how fucking terrible the Meta Quest app is on the computer. Like, I'm sure you had these problems like it's not plug and play on the PC. Like when you hook up, you got to crawl behind the PC. You got to go into a display port. You got to go into a USB 3.0. And then the app will sometimes work. Sometimes it won't. Sometimes it'll recognize the headset. Sometimes it won't. And that's really annoying. Whereas the nice thing the Quest 3 does have is it's got Wi-Fi 6. It's got wireless streaming. So I don't have to plug it in. 99% of the time I'm playing a PC VR game, I put it on, sit in front of my PC and connect wirelessly. <laughs> 
because it's just so much easier and so much more convenient than having to plug it in. And I launched the Steam Link app, so I am never going through the MetaQuest app on the PC. I'm connecting direct to Steam wirelessly. That's where you get the benefit of the Quest 3 and the 3S versus the older wired stuff is that you're bypassing their shitty hardware and their shitty hardware connection, cable connections, and their shitty software that you have to go through when you connect physically. Um, so yeah, I, I, I would say try the quest three, uh, screen at extra life, try mine out and see if that's enough of a bump for you. Cause I think between the resolution bump and the convenience bump, yeah, it may be worth it for you, especially since I, I know your space is limited cause you're in an apartment with the wireless, you can go do it in some other room where you have more space. Yeah. That's the other thing I was thinking is like, Oh, I could theoretically do this in the living room and not have to move everything out there. Yep. Yeah, because that's the big thing yeah. is I kept hitting stuff in here. <laughs> I was like, damn it. Yeah. Uh, just trying yeah. to reach. Also, the train, You, I did find there was like a size up option in Derail Valley, but I kept like having to reach over to grab stuff, um, which uh -huh. I guess is, is sort of realistic for a train. But uh, yeah, it, it, it there's something about driving a train in VR. It was really good. I really enjoyed it. So I, I yeah. highly recommend it. That game is just like it's 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 right on the edge of like technical like you still have to go like down and hook up the train and everything but it's just like it, it's it's kind of like the lionel version of of trains like model trains where like yeah, they're the, the more toyish version of model trains this yeah. is like the more toyish version of of uh of train simulators so it, it kind of sounds it kind of sounds like VTOL vr where it, it balances it between it's not super simple press to go press to break it's adding in certain systems, but it's adding in the idea of those systems and it's not making it super complicated for you to actually have to realistically engage with those systems. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it's nice. Um, and also, I will say when I started the game, <clears throat> sorry, I'm getting very emotional. Uh, it let me choose. It was like casual, regular or sim. So there were like different levels of that. And I, of course, did casual because that's me um yeah but yeah that is derail valley uh and then finally i i'm barely mentioning this game because i only played like maybe half an hour or an hour of it but um dragon quest 12 otherwise known as yakuza like a dragon is a game i have started playing because i finished um dr doctor and i star wars outlaws my ubisoft plus is up and i will play more star wars outlaws in probably like 15 years when i get it for a dollar and be like oh should i restart or just pick up where i was uh they're also I, I don't know if you've heard this a lot uh but they're like actively changing the game and how it works based on people's feedback like some of those n no fail stealth missions and the way stealth works they've like fixed and changed because people were yeah. complaining about it and they were like oh yeah let's and i was like are you they're like legit listening to feedback and there was a classic brad on next lane was like well maybe i'll just wait to play it since they're fixing things and i'm like yeah, yeah i guess yeah, I i'll just that, pause yeah. for a little bit um but it is a, it is a weird game i like really love it even though it's not great um i think just because so far it hasn't been like star wars it's the same way like andor wasn't like star wars it's just like it, it was the first time in a while you felt like you were living in a game um but anyways uh y yakuza like a dragon really fun so far i am playing as ichiban and i had to beat up some people i like the um the combat the turn-based combat's really neat um but i i like i said i've barely gotten anywhere in it because it's a lot of cutscenes at the beginning of that game uh and uh it, it's taking me a little bit i'm also playing You're in playing japanese you're playing like a dragon, not infinite wealth. Correct, like a dragon. Okay. Uh, I know infinite gotcha. wealth is the one you complained about taking like three hours to get to the game. Um, Honestly, it it wasn't a complaint. It was just, and I ended up stop, not playing the game anymore because it was there's a lot there and it's a little bit slow. But I really just wanted that. I wanted to watch that as a TV show. I did not yeah. need to play that as a game. Yeah. So this, I, like this, I can tell is getting to it, but like. I know at some point I think I go to prison for a while and I haven't hit that part yet. So I'm uh, I'm just playing it and it's fun and it's good to be back in a uh, Yakuza game. Uh, I almost did English, but I was like, I want to. I like keeping these games Japanese. Yeah, fuck that. It's way more. Yeah, well, it's Japanese, I, man. It was only because I was yeah. like, oh, because then I can 
do other things during cutscenes. But I was like, no, <laughs> fuck that. I love I, I love being forced to pay attention to things. Uh, so yeah, I kept kept it, it I, I played Metro Exodus through. I changed, switched it to Russian with English subtitles. Oh, I never was, did that. I've, it felt right. I I've heard a lot of people doing that. My only thing with games is when I won't do that, like vehemently won't do that, is if they didn't never recorded the language like to be uh -huh. uh, uh acted in, you know. Like oh, like no, if they, they were like yeah, so um there was like there was one or two games, I can't remember them, but they were like, Oh yeah, we're listening to the creator's language. It was like but they recorded it in English. They didn't they like outsourced it to be in their original language. Um Yeah. Okay, those are the games I've been playing this week. Jake, please tell me about Space Marine 2. Yeah, so I rolled credits on the the main campaign of Space Marine 2. Um and um it's pretty good. I mean, it's I think artistically a lot better than it is gameplay wise. It was just um how how is I it how is it autistically? Uh <laughs> I mean a lot of fun detail. A lot of stuff. Like, <laughs> you talked about Derail Valley that. already. Look at this. Look at that. Um, uh, there's a lot of... I don't know. I think just the the way that world is written, the, the 40k universe, um, the, the dialogue being all couched in this very kind of... Um, like, not old English, but it's very... It's almost like a like a... I mean, it's sci fantasy. It's it's got that that cry where everybody's talking like, uh, "Oh, do not stray from the path of righteousness, lest ye be judged." You're like, "Okay, yeah, I can vibe with this." And I just love when anybody says "adeptus mechanicus" because it's just that's such a good string of syllables. Um, but the combat never really clicked for me, which was unfortunate because it's, you know, you want that to feel kind of like a, a game about the Space Marines in the 40K universe. Um, uh -huh. You want that combat to feel really, um, really good. Like, I, and I don't know if it's a matter of it being third person rather than first person, but I just felt like the combat in, bo in Bolt Gun was a lot tighter and felt a lot better. It was, it was um, a doomer shooter yeah so it was yeah, a lot more and so hectic. I, I, yeah. I wondered if if uh space marine 2 is more gears of war than doom um okay. and it just it was just maybe a little too slow and the the ranged combat never felt as good as the melee combat but then the melee combat i felt like even i mean maybe i was just playing bad but i was playing on the second of four difficulty levels the one where they're like okay. here's for people who haven't really played this game before it's you know just a bog standard difficulty settings and i still felt that there were times where in really thick melee situations i was just getting like I was taking way too much damage. Um, but the story was good. I, for someone uh -huh. who's really not at all familiar with the 40K universe, um, it, I think, allows for um, a pretty easy entry point for people who aren't as familiar. There's a lot that they just kind of throw at you, but you get a lot of it through context. You're like, okay, I understand. I'm, I'm rolling with it. Um, they're big space racists. That's what that's what this game is. Um, Spacists, yeah, and yeah. Um, they're but like justified they're, racism. They're a hyper religious <laughs> space racist. Um, and um, yeah, I I just I I don't know. I, I feel like I want to keep exploring it because I do love the texture of that universe. Um, yeah. And they do have an it's interesting thing where the yeah. main campaign takes place and every couple of missions, it'll be like, oh, we have to send a second squad to complete this other objective so that we can complete our objective. And then you can go play that squad's mission after. Um, and, but it's an online multiplayer. Like I, I jumped into it and then suddenly I was with like two other real people um, operating the other the other characters in the trio of ultramarines 
Um, so uh -huh. I don't know if you can do that offline. You can do the main campaign offline. Um, but I don't know the, the I think it's the oper operations mode is what they call it. And okay. uh, I don't know if you can do it offline. But it's neat that that's like a, it's a way to revisit the campaign that's not like a new game plus, but it gives you this other angle, um, which is neat. And I liked it. It also has a PVP mode, which I will never touch because I cannot uh, imagine the PVP feels good to play. Too sweaty. At all. Yeah. No, not just that, but like the, just the combat never felt great. And so I didn't then want to do that with human people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, question. So I heard one of the main complaints I heard about this is that it's okay single player, but the game is really built around co-op. Is that how it felt like to you? Um, I don't know. I mean, I could definitely tell that it was built for multiplayer. If you're playing it single player, the the uh, friendly AI is not great. Yeah, that, um, that's what I heard, that, that you still have a squad. They just populate it with bots. They're good about you up. Like reviving you if you if you're down, but they're not. Oh, that's great nice. about like that. actually taking down enemies. Um, I always felt like the onus was definitely on me to do most of the fighting, and there were times where you have to like protect an objective, uh, or or get a bunch of enemies off of an objective, and I always felt like I was doing those on my own. So maybe it would be more fun if I had two two friends to play with. Yeah. Um, but, um, no friends. Yeah. No, I have no friends. I have no friends so, to play with. So I'm, I'm sorry, but I, I heard you were playing this and then I heard the thing about co-op and then I thought now is the perfect time we really should be doing a co-op playthrough. Cause I think the total play time is like nine to 10 hours. Yeah. It I wasn't like, very long. I will say, yeah. I don't know if it's worth $70. Um, oh, that's a good point, which uh, is like, that's kind of why after like an hour or two of playing it, why I didn't recommend like in the chat to maybe get the yeah. three of us to play it. If it comes to Game Pass or something in six months or a year, totally, let's do it. But yeah. um, I don't know if it was entirely worth the $70 price tag. I. I wonder if the original. As because maybe Marine? yeah maybe that's it has online co-op four players uh online only survival mode i'm just checking if it has campaign because that that could be that could be fun i started it, it a while ago like when they first announced space marine 2 yeah so i'll look it up because because it feels like space marine's hot right now this is you put this on the goatee list didn't you I did not. I put Bolt Gun on the goatee list last year. Bolt Gun rules. But oh, I did not so... put this on the goatee list. Oh, I put it on as a try. Yeah, I don't know. I think it'll be fun for us to play it all together. I don't think it's a goatee contender. Okay, I'm going to delete it. Okay, so that, that's good. That takes off the pressure of trying to play it this year. I like the idea of when it comes to Game Pass, we could have yeah. like a, a little playthrough. Okay, we that's, can, that's good can, to hear. What else, what else have you been playing? Uh, that's it. Okay. Um, I'll hit mine real quick. Uh, continuing to play two games. One is Astro Bot. Um, I think I'm nearing the end of that game. I've got 200 out of 300 possible bots. I'm not going to 100% it just because I think I think that would take, for me personally, my play style, I think that would take the joy out of the game if I had to really hunt for every single little thing. It's cool to try and do that. Like I'm basically going through every level once, try and find everything, but if I miss stuff, I don't sweat it and I don't try and go back and get it. Um, but I'm really enjoying it. The game continues to be a fantastic platformer, fantastic game design, just very joyful to play. Um, it's it's going on the goatee list for sure. So you guys, I, I'm excited to to force you guys to check it out during Extra Life. It's um, it's a, it's Heard only good things, and and it is just an absolute showcase piece for that Dual Sense controller. It's wild to me that Sony has not leaned more into that as a platform holder because it that's their killer piece this gen really is that controller um i also finished fallout new vegas finally uh 36 and a half hours which Lost ending count. did you do i did the mr house ending um so part of it is as a himbo character 
I'm a little dumb and uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm too smart to do the yes man thing. Uh, I had some altercations with the NCR, which I think was more the game being, I don't want to say buggy, but the game being obtuse where you're like, oh, the NCR is kind of nice. Wait, why are they shooting at me? Oh, I guess we're hostile for now for some reason, <laughs> like just accidental hostility. Uh, Caesar's Legion, Kaiser's Legion. I, I don't like how the game makes them just absolute villains. Like, how is that even an option to side with them? Like, there's no argument other than I'm just going to be a pure asshole playthrough. <laughs> Are you pro slavery or not? You know, it. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, 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 <laughs> so it really just came down to like Mr. House. And I think I have a good justification for it, which is like New Vegas is a fucking beacon of light and civilization. <laughs> It's the most in a pragmatic ending in my mind. Yeah. Yeah. And also it's like he has kept this together. And I was talking about this on stream. He's not a dictator because he's not the only one in power here. Like there are there are the Omertas. There's the kings like he lets other groups live and, and conflict with him a little bit. So he's not practicing like absolute control. He's just providing enough control to make sure the place remains stable and functioning. Um. And I'm like, yeah, let's let's go down that path. I, I was not a big fan of the ending, though, because I feel like the big climactic end piece at the Hoover Dam just feels like a bunch of like shoehorned sections back to back. I felt like it would be better if it was dragged out a little bit more. And then the other thing, um, Will, you were watching this stream. You could probably tell when the, the end credits hit when this, it's like a slideshow of like, here's what happened. Here's what happened. There's a whole lot of stuff that happens that is just out of fucking nowhere where you're like, what are you talking about? Like, there's one slide where they're just like, oh, by the way, Novak got overrun by the Legion and a lot of people died. But somehow they fought back. And I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, yeah, it, like, it was weird. I, I was wondering if those were like quests that you didn't end up doing but also like if you never knew about the quest that they, sh they shouldn't include that to make it seem like it's your fault you yeah know? and i don't know and, and for some of them i felt like i did complete the quest or or completed enough quests to leave them in a good state and it acted like you fucked up you made a huge mistake here so we're gonna go to the worst possible situation and it's just like that that didn't make sense to me so i was not a big fan of the ending i like what they're trying to do there but it I feel like Fallout New Vegas has a lot of options and choices and variety of characters and everything, which is great. But a little bit too often, you'll hit an end where they're just like, nope, good choice, bad choice, right? Where they just mm -hmm. like take things to an extreme and an absolute ending. And it's like, no, nah, things can just be kind of as they are, you know. So I still really enjoy the game overall. 36 and a half hours. The DLC was OK, but I'm glad I at least got to go through all the different DLC options. Um the thing that really surprised me, though, is when you think about it, the main quest of Fallout New Vegas is actually pretty short. Like, if you didn't have to worry about leveling or anything, you could breeze through that game in, like, I want to say, like, seven or eight hours, right? Like, if you're just focusing on main you quest stuff. It? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, exactly. Like, not even a speed run, just, like, I don't care about the side quest. But the fact that I got to 36 and a half hours, and even if I take away, like, let's say take away 10 hours of that is DLC... The fact that I spent 26 hours playing a game and a lot of that was optional side content, like there were a lot of streams where I was like main story quest and I did none of it because I'd be like, oh, what's this quest? Oh, who's this guy? What's there? Like fantastic world building, fantastic side quest. So it it really is just an incredible RPG. I'm super excited for Avowed and for uh, The Outer Worlds 2 like obsidian just knows how to make some some bangers of rpgs more outer there. worlds yeah yeah i'm excited um so yeah that's 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 what i've been playing damn i'm jealous uh but i was glad I, you know i realized i prevented you because of armo the week before from completing that game a week early <laughs> you would have easily that completed was fine. it um, Arma is one of those games where you can't really play it by yourself. And if somebody's like, want to play Arma, it's like, yes, immediately. Now <laughs> I'm online. <laughs> what server? Yeah. Um, I, um, I'm sad you didn't get to see it, but you can go see it at some point is, uh, I love hacking into Mr. House's little back room because you can oh, do yeah. it like as soon as you're there. 
I like my last playthrough. It was the first thing I did because I was like, wait, I have enough science and lockpick out the gate. So you just like science open two doors. You go and open his like little cryo chamber. His disgusting little body comes out. I, and You just yeah. murder him. <laughs> and it's so good. So I think I I did see that in my original playthrough because I remember seeing him in a little cryo chamber I, thing. For the longest time, I forgot. I always thought he was a robot. Like I never realized it was actually a person. I just thought it was yeah. like some like sort of cyber intelligence that had taken over, kind of like the big empty. Um, yeah. But even those were human brains, so kind of didn't, didn't make sense. I, I, um, I will say uh, this is not to open a can of worms. I did not like Fallout season one. I thought it had a lot of problems, but I got super hyped when they teased New Vegas at the end of that season one, and then playing through the game. And I'm like, even if they do half the things, even if they do half justice to all the people and locations and storylines of Fallout New Vegas, I'm going to be I'm, I'm going to be very satisfied with Fallout season two. So I hope they do the smart thing, which is Fallout New Vegas is fantastic. They should just not necessarily do the exact same storyline, but same factions, same characters, same dilemmas, same locations. Just fucking copy it. You can change the story as you need to for the for the show, but just do that because that would be fantastic to see. I agree. That would be awesome. Um, moving on here. Uh, news time? Is it news time? Do we need the news? Let's do the news. Yeah, give us the news theme. God, I love that news theme. Great every uh, week. Let's, yeah, let's start up with the game's news. Uh, did you guys happen to watch the PlayStation State of Play? No. No. Okay, let me hit the let me hit the hits. Astrobot DLC coming later this autumn. Um, it's going to include five new online speedrun levels and ten new bots to rescue. Guys, there's like five to seven bots per level. So honestly, this is a little disappointing to me because this sounds like they're they're saying we're going to give you seven levels, five of which are speedruns. So that's my only concern. Give me more Astrobot. This sounds like a very light DLC. Um, excuse me, I'm getting very emotional there's big news at the end of this i'm skipping past there's a metro vr game coming for the psvr 2 right. for the few people who have that pal world's coming to the playstation 5 uh lunar remastered never heard of that i think david's oh, I excited that. about that. that that sounds like a david something uh teenage mutant ninja turtle shredders revenge is then getting uh some dlc i know kyle was a big fan of that um we then have some more dragon age the veil guard dragon age the veil guard i was not interested in it but after i played mass effect i was like oh bioware can occasionally make good games and then this is getting very positive previews i i don't mean to sidetrack here but i feel like i have to play the dragon age game what, what about you guys i'm concerned I, ha I have to play it i haven't played any of them but same i'm not gonna go back but I've, this is getting I've, very positive reviews. I played previews. the beginning of Origins about four times because I keep saying to myself, I should play Dragon Age Origins because I like Mass Effect. Yeah. And then I like to beginning of the summer, I tried Inquisition and I made it like an hour and a half and I really wasn't into it at all. So gotcha. we'll see. Um, we are getting Alan Wake 2 DLC, The Lake House, which uh, will mm -hmm. be visiting a Federal Bureau of Control facility called The Lake House. You guys excited for this? Barry. I'm a big fan of this remedy verse. I'll play it. Awesome. I still need to play uh, the original two DLCs or three DLCs. Whatever that first one where they had like all the little episodic where you could play. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I never characters. touched those. Um Hitman World of Assassination is coming to PlayStation VR 2. This is also coming. I don't know if this is the exact same version, but Quest is also getting Hitman World of Assassination, which pretty cool to have. I don't know how if it works well enough, it'd be cool to have Hitman standalone at set VR. That'd be cool. Mm -hmm. uh, Legacy I really, of Kane. So I need to know about sorry, the gameplay. Go I, I just I'm so I'm fascinated by the idea of playing that game in VR. Like, how I, is it? How can, how can you get the same amount of reactivity? I know, but I mean, like, it does seem I, like it'll be like the change in perspective from third person to first person, and then having it also be in VR. Yes. really seems like it will up the difficulty in a really fun way. Maybe. I, but you can still peek around corners in first no, person. No, yeah, I know. Yeah. And presumably still you use your Batman detective vision. Where? Yeah. But Hitman's been out f 
Oh, I guess it's the World of Assassination version that's coming to VR. Because there's already a yeah, VR, yeah. And, but it's just P three, right? It's the yeah, it's the PC VR version. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, Legacy of Kane, Soul Reaver one and two remastered announced. Do you guys know anything about these games or care about these games at all? Yeah, nothing against them. They seem like uh, PlayStation classics. So there's some people who love them. Uh, skipping ahead, uh, Monster Hunter Wilds is now confirmed to be coming on Friday, February 28th. This this is looking solid, right, boys? Oh yeah, Very excited. Awesome. I mean, I liked uh, what was the one that went on switch was switch rise. first and then on rise i liked rise i mean i liked world and i liked rise that's only two monster hunters played but i uh, i'm super jazzed for uh monster hunter wilds awesome um we've got some horizon news for jake our resident horizon lover we've got lego horizon zero dawn that's coming out on november 14th and uh horizon zero dawn now has a remaster for ps5 it's only ten dollars if you own the original however the original no longer cost twenty dollars it now cost forty dollars they also doubled the price today <laughs> hell yeah wait original horizon was twenty dollars for a little while yeah until recently original horizon ps4 copy was twenty dollars and then they announced Crazy. the ten dollars to upgrade to ps5 and they also doubled the price to forty dollars <laughs> Yeah. Um, Are they changing we, we, uh, anything? Like, were there any notes on what they're changing other than graphics? They say re recorded conversation mocap and other tweaks. At least the summary from Eurogamer says that. So it's supposed to look better, and I guess they fixed some of the mocap stuff. Okay. Those weren't either the I, issues I had with <laughs> Rush Zero Dawn. At least, they, <laughs> at least they have the $10 upgrade, right? As, as long That's as they're true. not forcing full price on everybody. Um,. We, you know, just going to skip through here. Let's get to the big one. Folks, they're making a Ghost of Tsushima sequel called Ghost of Yote, starring Erika Ishii. You guys excited about this? Very excited. I think I am, too. I want to... Hold on, I'm going to... Uh, I just... What's the I want to be excited. Name? Erika Ishii. How do you spell? I, I, I want to be excited. It's just... <sighs> Twitter keeps telling me that this is a... DEI initiative. <laughs> and I don't like those, right? I need Same. straight yeah, white yeah, men. Yeah. I need straight white men in my video games, making the video games and playing the video games, preferably me. That's all I will do. Same. Um, um oh, uh, uh she's a destiny actor. Oh, oh, oh she's in destiny. Right. She comes back. Mm -hmm. I only know her from she's really popular in the uh the D D actual play RPG yeah, podcast a lot of drop network. Out. Yeah, drop out. She's been on Adventure Zone, stuff like uh, that. Um, this looks really oh, good. They, they are I, a Destiny. Actor. I'm sorry. I never finished uh, Ghost of Tsushima. Karen's been playing through Ghost of Tsushima recently. I, I don't know if she's gonna go back to it, but she was playing a lot of it. I have also seen this joke several places, but I will say, Karen said this to me seconds after I told her there was a new Ghost of Tsushima and that it was called Ghost of Yote. Is it Yote? I think I, Yotai? That, that's how I would pronounce it. Okay. Yes. And she said, why is it not called Ghost of Tushima? And I said, mm. that's really funny. You, you know what's crazy is there there is a Tushima Island in Japan. <gasps> so it was right there the whole time. That's where they wipe all their that's butts. That's a joke. Um, so, I, you know, honestly, when I saw this, I got excited, more excited than I thought I would. And I had to think about it for a bit. And it's because... I played Ghost of Tsushima. I probably played eight or nine hours. I got like halfway through the second island. Um, I was not a big fan of it. It's a very good game. It just wasn't working that well for me. But at the same time, kind of like like the the Jedi Fallen Order Jedi Survivor series, etc. I can appreciate it's a very well made game. And I did play this a lot longer than I did play the Jedi games. So I'm like, you know what? I had eight or nine hours of enjoyment out of that first game. This game is built from the ground up for the PS5. It looks like it's going to be a lot better. I heard they that their DLC for their first game was very good, so I'm assuming they're going to like really learn from their lessons. It's not going to be the same exact game. It's going to be better mechanics and storytelling and everything, which I think is a fair assumption to make from a sequel. So I'm like, yeah, I'll definitely play this day one, assuming the reviews aren't trash. Yeah. 
Like I'm, I'm excited still, for this. Have they announced whether or not they're still going to have like the haiku writing mini game? I I don't think yeah, we know that yet. So. It is like it's like 300 years later. All I care about. Um, yes. And uh, yeah, that, you mentioned I forgot about the DLC for the first game, but they ha- added like four player co op missions and like yeah, all that stuff. That's supposed so to be really good. Yeah. All that learning coming back. That'll be that'll be exciting. Yep, I'm excited for that. So Except that's for a the woman, state of play. But- you know <laughs> yeah i'll just I don't know, i'll just turn the audio off um oh. <laughs> hey speaking of women speaking of women in video games guys backyard baseball 97 is back this is such a cool announcement so we knew backyard sports was being resurrected by playground productions they've said they're doing games and tvs and they're trying to resurrect it this is their first actual here's what's happening announcement and as best as i can tell and will you may have to help me with this it feels like they are releasing Backyard Baseball 97 for Steam, and it feels like it is the original game. They have just put a nice wrapper around it so that it's easy to launch, and it has some achievements, and it has some options on top of it, which feels like the right way to re-release a classic game without going the remaster, etc. route. Does that sound right? Yeah, this this because uh, someone had posted the description of it, and it seemed like they couldn't get the wrapper to run on Linux or Mac but yeah, this this seems like they literally just took backyard baseball. It's essentially what uh, that Zombiever guy would do. It's just yeah. it, it it when you double click on the exe probably for backyard backyard baseball ninety seven, it launches an emulator of Windows XP and then launches the game in that. But you don't see any of that on the client facing side. So um, yeah, I, I'm excited they're doing that. I wish a lot more game companies did that with their older games for preservation. I think it's, it's, yes. it's a, that is the s- most simplistic remaster. If you even want to use that word, uh, uh of yeah. pulling it forward and, and, and companies like Xbox do that a lot with games because they're on the same hardware, but doing this with, um, this is great. So I, I'm glad they did this. Yeah. Yeah. Super excited. Uh, Moving on to the business journal section, guys, like we've been talking about, we've said it multiple times this episode. Diversity, equity, and inclusion initiatives are bad for companies. And that's why Ubisoft is having such a tough time. They've delayed Assassin's Creed Shadows because they said they need more time to work on it and they want to release it on PC Steam the same day and date. Uh, there's been a strike called by Ubisoft workers over return to office order and pay disputes. They've admitted that Star Wars Outlaws is underperformed. I think they adjusted their uh, their revenue, either quarterly or annual, down like 30%. And the board of directors has launched a review of the company to understand what's going on here as their stock price, I believe, today hit like a 10-year low. They are just plummeting. What's going on at Ubisoft? Uh, they need... they. Uh, sorry, what was that, Jake? Nothing. I was dramatically I, I, inhaling. I don't know either. Oh, okay. I don't I know thought, either. <laughs> yeah, that's it's a lot of things that happen. All, like, it makes you think, like, something happened. And they're like, oh, fuck. Well, I, but I, I mean... Think I, I think I know least... what something happened, right? It's basically this. People stopped buying their games. They started putting out fewer games. And they're not selling as well as they used to. It's it's literally like, I, I don't want to be reductionist, but it feels like they have put out the same quality of game for so long, but because they put out enough of them each year and because people ate shit and kept buying them, they were okay. But now they have slowed down the delivery of those games without increasing the quality and the market has adjusted where they're not going to keep buying those after Watch Dogs Legions, after, you know, a uh, 100 plus hour Assassin Creed, etc. And so now they're delivering fewer product with less people buying. Well, yeah, I was going to say, like, at least from where I'm sitting, I feel like like the past several years, I don't remember the last time I saw an Ubisoft game that was like reviewed well like so i've yeah. seen some where people are like oh yeah it's fine but it's usually like fine to bad and after several years of that yeah like you said people aren't buying it anymore and like i don't know what the internal review is gonna be but it's like oh yeah we're we're not retaining staff very well and we're taking the games are too big and too expensive and taking too long to make and people aren't buying them as much and um 
that's why we can't have um, these uh, diverse leads in the new Assassin's Creed game. Yeah. Do yeah. you guys want to know the that's, last? Let's be honest. Jake hit the nail on the head, right? It has nothing to do with everything we've talked about. It's because of diversity initiatives. Will agrees. I agree. I think these women need to go back into the kitchen and bake us up better video games. Um, no, I was going to ask do, do, the last Metacritic Ubisoft game that went over 90 on Metacritic. Do you want to guess what year that or what year and what game that it was? When was Assassin's Creed Black Flag? 2014. I'm going to guess 2014. It is I'm not 2014. Far Cry Assassin's 3. It is literally Far Cry 3. It uh, came out in 2013 with a Metascore critic in 91. Uh, Trials of Evolu- I This is just an article. I don't know if it's it's CBR. I don't know if it's 100% correct. But um, sorry, this is posted in 2023. Trials of Evolution in 2012 was a 90. And then all the way at number one with a. Uh, with a score of Metacritic score of 94 is Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell Chaos Theory from 2005. Wow. <laughs> wow. But wait, what did, what did, um, what did the Prince of Persia from this year get? Cause that got uh, very good. Oh, uh, that's a good point. But that uh, was a smaller that's... team and a smaller game, right? It, it was. Yes. And it did hit the market, but I, but I do think they did put out at least that quality game this year. Uh, Will's uh, looking uh, it up, but yeah, I, up. I think we hit the nail on the head, which is that, they had this whole thing a couple years ago where they were like, we're putting out too many games. We're going to slow down and focus on making the games better. And they like delayed Watch Dogs Legion and all this other stuff. And then the games came out and the quality was not better. <laughs> and it's just like, I, I think they are floundering. I don't think they know how to make good video games anymore. And so they just keep making the same ones over and over again. Well, I mean, I'm sure there's, there is also something to be said for like, like it's brought up in the the now very long ongoing discussion about layoffs in relation to the quality of the games that are coming out. Um, You look at places like Nintendo and FromSoft that consistently put out really well-reviewed games and people are like, oh, what's your secret? And they're like, we don't fire our staff after every game comes out. And so now we have veterans who have been in the studio for 10 plus years or 20 plus years in some cases. And we all work well together and we make good games. And you have yeah. these bigger AAA studios and, and whatnot that just seem like employee turnover wild, in addition to just hemorrhaging staff because of the COVID expansion and now market constriction. But yeah. Um, yeah. Plus, I think a Nintendo also does something crazy, which is if one of those teams does make a bad game, they put it on the shelf and possibly never release it. Or if they do, they wait a long time. Like, what what was the Everybody Want to Switch? Was that the name of the sequel? That turns out has been done for like two years and they knew it just wasn't hitting until they finally released it. <laughs> like, if there's a bad game, they will just sit on it uh, and then maybe release it. Whereas and it feels like Ubisoft has... happening to Metroid Prime 4. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Whereas it feels like Ubisoft has no quality control. They're just like, yep, shove it out. It's good enough, good enough. Will, you, it looked like you were going to say something. Uh, yeah, Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown got an 86, which is good. Uh, oh, that is the, good. The, um, that article I was reading was only over 90. But that's still crazy gotcha. to not have, gotcha. a, have a 90 since 2013. Yeah. For a big publisher that's putting out a lot of games and a lot of big IPs, yeah. Um. Let's talk about hardware. We already talked about the Quest 3S. Uh, Not really much more to add there, but there is a new mystery filing with the FCC from Nintendo. This is from The Verge. Quote, Nintendo has filed a new 24 gigahertz wireless device with the FCC, and it isn't the Switch 2. Uh, It's powered by USB-C. It does support a 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi radio and a 24 gigahertz uh, MM wave sensor. And it, it it's hard to tell by the size of this, but they have a picture of the device with the label on it. And it appears to be, I would guess, maybe two inches by two inches, roughly somewhere around there. What do you guys think this is? I, I saw a rumor, but I want to see if you guys get there first before I say it. Uh, I two inches by two inches. 
Yes, imagine like a little little square something. And and I roughly wanna, two inches by two inches. I'm just I want to say like a pokeball or something. But yeah, could or be. a tamagotchi. <laughs> like a like a Nintendo DS mini. Yeah. Oh, like a super like a, like a GBA micro type thing. Yeah. yeah, that could be. Interesting. I'm also trying to think of like if it's some sort of bridge device between is that the... not like the size of a post-it note so they also say the 24 gigahertz mm wave sensor is it's a it could be a radar sensor to track movement so kind of like an ir sensor it's it's tracking distance or movement etc think it's a okay this is what i think it might be i think the switch 2 might not have the built-in nfc reader and this is an nfc reader Oh, like a distance NFC reader? Because, yeah, because my 3DS doesn't have an NFC and it came with a plug-in one that you scan yeah. all the Amiibos on. And I wonder if this is one of those for the Switch 2. Could be. Amiibo. I, I saw a rumor. So somebody about a year and a half ago was posting Switch 2 rumors. They said some things that have since been proven to be true, like magnetic Joy-Cons, etc. One of the things they said was that it will have a detachable camera. So this may be like a Game Boy camera for the Switch 2 because the Switch 2, uh, the latest rumors had a USB-C port on top as well, not just on bottom for the dock. So imagine a little camera click in the top of the Switch 2 and it's got this millimeter wave sensor. So it's doing camera plus plus distance detection, something like that. This feels like a Nintendo fucking gimmick. Here. I can see the, that. The next Pokemon game will have an AR function. Oh, that's like, yeah, maybe not the main line, but like a Pokemon Go esque spin off for the Switch 2 uh -huh. with camera, with. Or they'll with have like Connect, Xbox LiDAR Connect things. Or yes. another a new, po a new, new Pokemon Snap. Yeah. In yeah. AR. Yeah. So that's what I'm thinking. That's that's the thing that made the most sense to me was a little attach on camera. Yeah. Camera. I like that. I um, like that. Folks, that's going to do it for this week's news. We do have a content call out here. I've the both of these are mine if I can hit them real quick. First up, uh Solo Q S O L O Q, which is an RPG weekly planner. Uh we we teased this a while ago and promoted them. They are now on Kickstarter. This is basically like a weekly planner with like a an RPG-esque element to it. So like you can set your quest being like do the dishes, finish my taxes. Uh this is launched by a friend of mine, but this is also somebody who was impacted by the video game industry layoffs and they turned that layoff into creating this passion project and launching it. They have hit their goal on Kickstarter, but that's no excuse not to go and check this out. So that's solo Q S O L O Q. Uh, we also have uh, Sibylla, friend of the site, Uber fan. Um, they have commissions open for uh, their uh, art. So go check them out. Uh, I'm going to put their link in the... I'm trying to think of the easiest way to... Sibylla Scribbles, S-I-B-I-L-L-A Scribbles. If you Google that or check out our Discord, you can find some stuff there. They've got fantastic. They do fantastic illustrations and art, and their commissions are open. So yeah, go check them out. Uh, Wishlist Spotlight. Who put who put this on here? I did not. I didn't either. Unless I did and I, I forgot. I do have. Uh, oh, I did. Uh, no memory. I did. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, the this name game. did not spur anything. This is really cool. This is. I was really hoping they would have. Okay, this is basically an open world game where you are a horse rider. You're controlling a Mongolian nomad camp. You're trying to build up your camp, move the camp along, capture wild horses, train the horses, chart the landscape. A couple key things that are really cool here. There's no combat. There's no combat, and as far as I can tell, there's no death here. So it's just like a... Ride your horse, explore the landscape, build up your horse community, get better horses. And it looks gorgeous. Windstorm, the legend of Kimori. Uh, wishlist that now on Steam. It looks really, really cool. You guys and seen this? listen to the Rolling Stones Wild Horses. That's a great idea. I, yep. I saw this on Twitter and I think it's really great. And I think all the people 
who were mad that there's no combat in this game to go fuck themselves. <laughs> yeah. I was just like, yeah. it's like announcing like a new video game about an office, and they're just like, oh, but w- w- like, or any new video game, just being like, why doesn't it have X in it? They're like, because we didn't fucking put it in it. Like, what do you like, mean? My Animal Crossing character have a gun. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like, yeah. Oh, I hate like. like Listen, the DEI stuff makes sense to complain about. Like, women shouldn't be in game. No, I'm kidding. But but to just be like, yeah. oh, I made this awesome Mongolian thing. Why can't I fucking kill people and rape people like the yeah. Mongolians did? Like, it, why can't I do I that? Think, like, like this is not you, to dude. this is not to excuse their behavior in any way. But I think what I think the reason why they have that knee jerk reaction is this doesn't look like an indie game. This doesn't look like yeah. a simple office game or whatever. It looks like an incredible, beautiful, realistic AAA game. Beautiful landscapes, beautiful people, horses. You're doing all this horse riding. So of course the knee jerk reaction is, of course it's got combat. All AAA games have combat that and it's like no you don't need to do that yeah. and that's cool i want to be genghis khan with my harem of concubines and i would like uh, let's to send produce it. Let's send it here i would yep. like to produce airs speaking of airs folks uh I, that is so loud that i might literally jump off a car uh folks uh we are from subpixel in case you didn't know this is local chat i'm your host will crosby uh jake terrio was here ian gibson was here uh we if you would like to join the fight against dei then head on over to <laughs> subpixelfilms.com forward slash we we should hatred. disclaimer fuck all the dei complainers yeah, bring yeah, all yeah, the we're, diversity etc yeah yeah bring it all. fuck them all they're a bunch of pieces of shit um Whoa. Uh, None moving of this on. Ever run for political <laughs> office. <laughs> Ian uh, won't be back with more Fallout New Vegas tomorrow because it's over, folks. It's over. He's done with it. But we'll be back next week with some Arma uh, on Tuesday and some local chat. Uh, or, yeah, on Thursday. And then I believe Spooky Pixel next weekend. We still got to figure that stuff out. Uh, I've got a bunch of games to play and a bunch of games to finish. So it'll be spooky. It'll be fun. But we'll see you next week. Bye.